Hello everyone, welcome to yet another episode of Dark Match, and tonight we are going to be talking about TNA Lockdown. Oh. We'll get to that. As always, I am your foxy friend Backlash. I am the match striker of Dark Match, Mega Fighter 3. I am the Lord Star, and what the fuck did I get myself into? And I'm Iron Bike, Iron Bike Dash, and this is What is the Iron Sheep Tweeting Now? <laughs> DNA make biggest mistake in the world putting the raisin balls on the TV. <laughs> Who exactly is raisin balls? Well, I think it's Hulk Hogan. Ah. By the timing, no. By the time that tweet came out, it was for the Lethal Lockdown match. So maybe it was Eric Bischoff. No, I'd like to think it was Garrett. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd like to think it was Garrett. Oh, God, lockdown. <laughs> yeah, oh. this was not a good pay-per-view. No, it wasn't a good pay-per-view, but it was a, on paper. You'll look at this on paper. You write it out. It's actually a good card. It's just it's booked horribly. Oh, it's booked like it's, it, it's booked like Whoever was supposed to be booking it was drunker than, I don't know, Rick Flair in his promo. Mm. <laughs> you, mean, you mean drunker than Iron Man? No, 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 no. Rick Flair is always drunker than Iron Man. Even when Tony Stark was in the literal gutter making uh, armors out of trash cans, um, <laughs> he was not as drunk as Rick Flair was last night. Oh, God. Yeah, but we'll get to that. Oh yeah, let's let us let us start off with James Storm loading up his truck to head to Nashville. Padding. And that that is literally what we will talk about later on. Because there was so much padding. So it, much padding. It almost felt as padded as WrestleMania. If not more so. And I think and I'm just going out on limb, limb here. I really do not think they're, that Bound for Glory or Slammiversary or even Victory Roads is um, TNA's WrestleMania. I think they really want to make Lockdown their WrestleMania. That makes no goddamn sense. It's an no. old cage pay-per-view. It's no, a gimmick no, pay-per-view. I didn't even I didn't say it made sense. But it, it almost seems like that is where their year begins and ends. It's, always, it's like at Lockdown. Which, but, mm, yeah, um, so we start off after James Storm, and again, they're going to they're gonna go through this video package between Bobby Roode and, and James Storm, all, all damn, almost all damn, no, no, at the beginning and at the end, we're going to see the same video package of Bobby Roode and, and James Storm. It is wonderfully edited, wonderfully um, put together, and it just tells the story of these two. And then we get to see Team Garrett. Yeah, they open with Lethal Lockdown for some goddamn reason, which was apparently announced on Twitter by Dixie herself. Do any of us follow Dixie? No. Nope. We, we follow her on the Dark Match account, but I, I don't think any of us follow her personally. Yeah. I don't. So, th hmm. so this came off to a complete surprise to me. Yeah. And what, yeah. And what also came off to a complete surprise to all of us is... Well, the order, uh, well, some of the, well, one of, at least one of the participants, because we swore up and down, this guy was not going to be in the match. Apparently we were wrong, but we'll get to what it is. Mm -hmm. So we get to start off with Garrett Bischoff of, of Team Garrett, and, oh, hi RVD and Mr. Anderson, and, oh, hi Gunner, why are you talking to them? Production 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 one. One. Yeah, they cut to Gunner a bit too early, who's just standing around chatting uh, chatting it up with the other team. Yeah. It's just like in WCW. Chris Jericho chases off another wrestler, then they stop and walk away chatting. Yeah. It's production botch. Number oh, one. There's, there's a couple in this show. Um, This... This uh, Mike Tanay and Taz keep bit, uh, keep harping on the fact that Team Garrett, I'm sorry, Team Eric has the advantage. No, they don't. 
Nobody they has the advantage. There's no yeah, advantage. Like, there's no. De- there can be no decision until everyone is in the ring, which makes no sense. Like, no. I, I, here, here's the thing that bothered us all. You know, when we were in the call last night, is the fact of the matter is, what advantage is there really? I mean, unless you have a, you know, a clear cut, you've beaten down the other team to, to the point when their fifth member finally gets in all fresh and hopped up and ready to go, and you can quickly beat him down, yeah, then you've got an advantage. But not in this environment, not in this type of a match. It would make more sense if it was elimination, because the, because the heels have the advantage, as they always do, and you... They could just beat up all the faces as they come in, get the numbers advantage. They start two on one, and they get that. Yeah, there's some some guy comes in. He has to fight two guys. Then he has to fight three guys. He gets beaten. Another guy comes out. He has to fight three guys and four guys, and so on. That's an then, advantage. It's yeah, not that, an advantage when it is impossible to win before everyone is already in the ring. But by the yeah. time the tenth guy comes in, and everyone's fucking blown out and killed by then. Yeah. No one has an advantage then. No. Well, except for the face, except for the for the fifth face face guy. Yeah. 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 And it wasn't it, even a fifth face guy to enter. It was a fifth heel guy. No. 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 It, it wasn't. wasn't uh, Rob Van Dam was the last guy to enter. Yeah, oh Van right. Dam. Crap. So, so yeah. We, <laughs> the, so here's their order. Just just so so we can you know, cut to the chase here. The order goes Garrett, Gunner, Bully Ray, Austin Aries, um, Kazarian, who looked like Scott Hall if he lost a bar bet, AJ Styles, followed by Christopher Daniels, followed by Mr. Anderson, followed by Eric Bischoff, then followed by Rob Van Dam. Eric Bischoff, by the way, we we swore up and down that it was supposed to be flair. Okay, you know what? Um... I actually thought that too, and I went back and watched the results yeah. from uh, Impact. Apparently, it was Eric all along. So yeah, we goofed. We goofed. Hey, we 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 can't. We have production it. boxes too. Yeah, but, but at least we're, but at least we actually own up to them. And like TNA, yeah. this oh my god, this 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 match was fuck written all over it, hmm. and it wasn't good fuck either. You know, in the cage, I, Lord. I, I, yeah, I, I mean, hated, I hated this match. I hate it so much. I hate it, and I'm gonna explain why. Because they lower the cage, and everyone's beating everyone up with weapons. And for all we rip on this, these guys put it all out there. Like AJ Styles and Kazarian, they fucking killed themselves for this match. But and... the finish is um, basically Eric is beating up on Garrett with a kendo stick, and Garrett just yeah. gets up. Hits him with a guitar, and he gets he's never drawing a dime. <laughs> yeah, El Cap- Yeah, hits yeah. Eric with the El Cabong. Yeah, he he gets the pin. So all these guys killed themselves for the match, and the only one who gets over is Garrett, who yeah. spent the entire match crumpled in the corner. Yeah, well, and least- he pinned a guy that that was cowering in the corner for most of the match too. As as soon as RVD hit. Yeah, yeah, the uh, finish involved Bischoff. the two non-combatants. Yeah, it was it was it, it, Eric. The Bischoffs had almost nothing to do with this match. The, the the most we got was we got to watch Garrett Bischoff get the crap beat out of him, and Eric Bischoff try to pretend he was a turnbuckle. <laughs> I mean, there were some good spots in this match. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, the crowd. This was probably one of the few times the crowd was, you know, alive. But for the most part, they were dead. Yeah. And yeah. and and there was one point. There was one point. Gary hits him. I don't know what he hit on somebody. I think it was Christopher Daniels. And he goes for the cover, and Earl Hepner just goes, um. Uh, yeah, I'm getting him into position. Oh, never mind. No, he didn't even like get into position. He just stood there waiting for Eric to make the save. Hit his, yeah, hit his spot with the kendo stick. And it was and there is a gif going around the uh, internet now of Earl Hepner going, "I don't give a fuck." Or actually, <laughs> it's, 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 I mean, yeah, it's amusing and everything. 
But, but God damn it, it looked so unprofessional. Yeah, it says, like I give a fuck. That's what it says. It's hmm. like I give a fuck. Obviously, you don't. So, and uh, also, apparently, Eric Bischoff can't use the name Eric Bischoff at a flea market. I'm not exactly her- sure how that works. Is this like that Booker T. Ahmed Johnson view back in WCW or something? No, 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 because apparently TNA now owns the name Bischoff. That is not even the stupidest thing that happens tonight. No, it's not. It's just, you know, the downfall. So, our next match. Mo- moving on after, you know, today and, and as plug Twitter. They want to know who's going to win, Team Brood or Team Storm. Is that, like is, Team Brood and C Nation. Oh. We've got the TNA Tag Team Championship. So Mojo Joe and Magnus versus the Motor City Machine Gun. And Tane and Tad are very quick to remind us that after lethal lockdown, there are three ways now to win a match. Pinfall, submission, or escape the cage. Guess what guess what ha- what none of these four do? Go Try to guess. escape? Nope. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> you know what? I wanted to like this match, but when I can't get interested in a Motor City Machine Guns match, you're doing something wrong. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was look, I was making wanty eyes at my 3DS, wanting to play o- Ocarina 3D on Master Quest mode. This is such an easy match to book: tornado steel cage match. Both mm-hmm. teams try to escape the ring, escape the cage. This is easy. Why don't they do this? This isn't Vince Russo booking here. I refuse to believe that, that this is still Vince's stuff, because even Vince isn't this stupid. I, I don't get why there's even tagging in a cage, or how you could tag in a cage. But TNA found a way. Oh, God damn it, they found a way. And it's and it's as dumb as you might think. <sighs> you know, I was, I was pretty much under the impression that we were going to see a DQ at some point tonight. Yeah, I, I think we all were because you know this is uh, TNA. I mean, don't get me wrong. This, like we said, this match had what we wanted. Okay, it had um, it had the guns. It had Samoa Joe. It had random warm body number five thousand. Um, <laughs> it had that one but, British guy that's kind of okay in the ring. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, the team of. Joe and Magnus is okay, but it's a team called Joe, Samoa Joe and Magnus. There's there's really no tag team identity. You know, I really, really am sick of hearing the argument that uh that that TNA has a better tag team division than WWE because they they did, but they don't anymore. No, no, yeah. they don't. They're down to what free tag teams now. Well, and the guns are back, and if they're staying back, that that's up for debate because um, we all know what happened when they brought the British invasion back. They were around for one pay per view, and then they disappeared. We have Mexican America, which don't do anything anyways, and then we have Joe and Magnus. Actually, speaking of, I was surprised that Mexican America didn't uh, didn't try to do a run in during this match. Yeah. After what what happened on on uh, on Impact, yeah, why didn't they try to do a run in? Because you know they're apparently they're apparently you know dumb enough to take on four guys when it's just two of them. I'm but, I'm, pretty, uh, I'm pretty sure TNA is just fucking with us at this point. Probably. Speaking of fucking with us, um, the guns lose. Okay. Which immediately you know kills any momentum that the guns even had. And I think it was Backlash. Didn't you say that, you know, maybe they want to extend this feud? Well, maybe, but, like... uh, Again, this is TNA we're talking about. Yeah, I mean, like, they might just not do anything with the guns. Mm -hmm. Which is probably what's going to happen, you know? I mean, I've I've, I've given up on TNA to do the right thing anymore. Yeah, after lockdown, I mean, it's just... 
like my faith in this company is destroyed, especially yeah. after what happens at the end. But we'll get to that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, next up is a match everybody wanted to see. Um, the TNA TV Championship is up for grabs as Devon takes on Robbie E with Robbie T, who seems to not want to get out of a cage. I don't remember anything from this match. Nobody does, because it was one of those Blink and Devon won. Yeah. It... Mr. Okay, Elgin Craig, get out of my head, please. Devon kicks Robbie in the gut, hits a neck breaker. Yeah, you, yeah Devon you, wins. I... You can't even say interested looking at the results. Wow. No, it's just, I go into rapidly reading it off mode that no one can hear. No. And here's my thing. Can they please just rename this fucking belt to something other than the TNA television title? Yeah, it sure. hasn't been. Yeah, both Robbie E and Devon have not been on TV ever since <laughs> Devon won it. And, and even it before even... that, I, I can't remember. I can't re- mention a specific time that they've been on TV. I can't even. But... I probably could count on one hand the amount of times the TNA TV title has ever been defended on actual television. Which is what we're supposed to be defended on TV, not on a pay per view. Nobody's gonna buy because nobody You're... cared. <sighs> I mean, honestly, I didn't care. And like when I say this is one of those blink and you miss the finish, that's what it is. It was Blink, and Devon's music is playing, and then he's getting attacked by Robbie T. Because <sighs> why not? Because we have nobody else to feud for this belt. Yeah, this is just uh, this is just I, I don't even know. So we do go backstage, and Matt Morgan just I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, Matt Morgan is talking, and, uh, well, he's Matt Morgan, so nobody's listening to him. Yeah. Nobody, nobody cares. That's how bad this really is, okay? I don't care that he, he, he's pissed at Crimson. I don't care enough about either Matt Morgan or Crimson or about this feud, especially when the fact that they keep harping on the fact that, oh, Crimson is 15 months undefeated. Lies, 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 and more lies. Lies and slander. No, it's just lies. There's no slander here. Um, But no, it's like, can you give me an actual match number? Uh, That's what I thought. Shut up and sit down, Mike. He's lost (laughs) matches. He got disqualified in his first match against Morgan, and... He lost the tag team titles. What what they're really harping on is the fact that he's never been pinned or made to submit. Don't care. I think I'm with Jingus on this one. Um, we'll get we'll get to the we'll get to the stupidity that Matt Morgan versus Crimson in a second, because now we've got the TNA Knockouts Championship, where Gail Kim comes out with her best friend. Madison Rain to take on Velvet Sky. Yes, despite the fact that her and Madison hated each other a month ago. Yeah. And Madison is still slowly morphing into Karen Jarrett Jr. And oh god, make her go away. This match was actually not terrible, but it, it was, was still very forgettable. If it, that was, yeah. it was on the Oh, it was it was it was on the oh it was on the good side of okay. Did right. this match start with at least two or three roll ups though? Oh, God, yes. Somewhere Jingus is uh, screaming and doesn't know why. Um, Roll-ups, roll-ups. Oh, wait, more roll-ups. Oh, roll-ups, roll-ups. Uh, roll-up, and uh, we will. We did say this. Velvet Sky does a better head scissors than Kelly Kelly. Oh, yeah. Mm. At least That's Velvet okay. tries to put on a good show. Yeah, and so does Gail Kim, but again... What really killed this match, at least for us watching it, was the crowd. You know, if you can't get a Nashville crowd to pop, you're doing something... And you're TNA, and that's where you came from. There, There's something wrong with your pay-per-view. Yeah. 
I, and I know I'm going off on a tangent here, but we did we did notice this during during the broadcast. Um, whenever they cut to Mike Tanay and um, Taz, you they had them down at ringside. First mistake. They also had them they also, uh, behind behind when you have a, a uh, uh, the commentators at ringside and you cut to them. You pretty much want to have somebody, oh, I don't know, something exciting going on behind him, like the crowd going, trying to mug for the camera and just, you know, get noticed. There was this old couple sitting in between them, not, you know, at the commentary test, but, you know, in the camera shot. And they were like, <laughs> well, this is a lovely way to spend a Sunday evening. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> oh, God. And it was like, again, match the matches that were supposed to be exciting, they weren't because the crowd was dead. They had one guy in a in whole Hogan gear, old school Hogan gear. You're gonna put him behind Mike Tanay and Tad, and he would have made the show that much better because at least he was trying. He was mugging. Yeah. No. In WWE, do you know how goddamn much it is for those seats behind the commentators' booth? Probably in the four-digit numbers. So you know you're only going to get like the hardcore crazy fans who are willing to pay that much. But the teammates, they'll just put any old, any random fuck sitting behind them. And it's and then tonight you got Grandma and Grandpa are like, oh, this is a lovely way to spend an evening. Oh, thank you, honey. For me, that makes more enjoyable. Um, oh, a charming girl. Yeah. Um, this match ends with Benson Rain distracting Snow and Sky. Velvet Sky sees Gail Kim attempting to slowly crawl out of the cage. She tries for a roll up, and Gail reverses it to a roll up, and. Yeah. Jinga screams. Yeah, Jingus goes into a coma. Um, and Zelda's not even upset. She's like, oh, darn. Oh, no, I don't get to be a worthless champion. And, and wasn't Gail grabbing her tights, so she kind of got screwed? I, mean, yep. I didn't even notice. Yeah, I yeah, didn't yeah. notice either, but I'm pretty sure that's what they were trying to put over. What I thought they did was, was I thought I saw Gail trying to grab the ropes for leverage, but they were too far away. Which makes a botch. Because, oh, that... because Velvet was not hurt. Like, she was yeah. set to leave the cage Like she when Gail grabbed her. Like, she was just going to walk out. And... Nope, you pinned. Yeah. Oh, by the way, there was a there was an actual uh, awesome spot. It looked like Velvet Sky was going for her uh, finisher off the top rope, the uh, in your face, but instead it got reversed into a back body drop, which then got reversed into a off the top rope power bomb. I mean, hmm. God bless you, Gail Kim, for taking that. But yeah, Gail Kim is still your. DNA Knockouts champion. Hey guys, are, are you noticing a theme with the championship matches? Retaining? Yeah. Hmm. So out comes Ric Flair. Oh dear. Oh god. And very... th- this was the point where I just had to say stop. Stop the ride. I want to get off. Because Flair comes out and he's ranting about Hogan. Yeah. And he starts mocking the audience. He's calling everyone fat. And um, he says, you know, Hogan, you're pissing me off. Get out here. So here comes Hogan. Hogan gets in the ring and he puts over Flair. He's like, oh, brother, you're the greatest in this company, brother. And I respect you, brother. And Flair is just like, I don't respect you or the decisions you're making for this company. And I want to fight you. Yes, guys. Yes, li- yes Virginia. They are programming Hulk Hogan versus Ric Flair where they will wrestle. It's okay, Backlash. It's okay. You're with your friends. No, it's not okay. I know. I'm scared, too. (gasps) 
just so just so everybody in the audience knows why we're upset about this there is going to be a combined 121 years in the ring it was age in a cage too that's what this was you know what no one wants to see this if i wanted to see two old guys fighting i would go to a retirement home and announce that there was only one cup of tapioca pudding left (sighs) <sighs> and, and what gets worse is Hogan seems to be okay with this. He, he apparently what, what really what 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 really set Ric Flair off is the fact that Eric Bischoff lost. Okay, no, no, it wasn't that in fact. It was the fact that Eric Bischoff was even in Lethal Lockdown. Okay, he volunteered. Yeah, that's what we said. That's what we said. He fucking volunteered for this shit. I'm with Backlash on this one. Just... (laughs) And it ends with... Flair goes to remove the jacket. Hogan drops him with a big right. And then just leaves. And Flair gets back on the mic going, Get back here! Get back here! I'll beat up Mike today! And then he throws his shoe. Shoes. Both shoes. shoes. No, he threw one. We'll get to the other one because it comes up later. (laughs) Oh, and by the way, he doesn't elbow drop the coat. That was bullshit. Yeah, he did. He hit a running elbow drop on the on the coat. Oh, I did I miss that? Shit. Yep. Yep. Because they were focusing on Hogan, but you could see Flair, you know, uh, hitting the big elbow drop on the jacket. They and, cut away from hitting the elbow drop on the coat. Yeah. Those fuckheads. Well, o- Hogan's more important anyways. And, yeah, he throws both his shoes at Hogan. One doesn't even make it out of the cage, and the other, I don't know where, where it went. I think, I think someone got a souvenir. <laughs> yep. So, <laughs> yeah, a very expensive souvenir at that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's going to pop up on eBay. Oh, my God. What's? Okay. Oh, no. Matt Morgan versus Crimson is next. <laughs> With special guest star Rick Flair's other shoe. <laughs> oh, yeah. At this, at this point, the nostalgia critic song bo- "Boring" from the Junior Rebuke started to play through my mind. It's not even that. This is the. This has dumbass written on it okay at one point matt morgan has crimson dead to right all he has to do is walk out not even walk out drop down he's already halfway out of the cage he looks at crimson and goes back oh like he just climbs back down no high spot or anything no no, he was he was in. He was at the cage door. Can you actually see Matt Morgan climbing anything? <laughs> I, I I don't. I, I think when we when we saw this, we were like, "What are you?" Uh, yeah, Crim- we were like, "Yeah, Crimson's winning." At, at that point, it was yeah, Crimson's winning, which is what, exactly what happened. Basically, um, Crimson. Trips up Morgan and and you know just climbs out and jumps to the outside. He's still undefeated in TNA. Well, no, but yes. I... He's the chosen one of losing. Yeah. And I think, uh, I, think I don't want to talk Morgan about this that. anymore. The match was boring and forgettable. Yeah, the crowd helped by you know. Reflecting our mood. Mm-hmm. So up next is a video package, very, very well done, uh, highlighting why Kurt Angle hates Jeff Hardy. Yeah, this is where all their effort went into the video packages. And goddamn, is it nice! And what the fuck is Jeff Hardy painting eye eyeballs on his eyelids? Because he think he's like deep and poetic and stuff. But you know what? He's been. Doing it for a while, Iron Bat. He's been yeah. doing it since 
Since his return, really, I think. Since you he stopped what? wearing the Predator mask. I, yeah, I, I think it... Yeah, I was just trying to... After he I, sent... It was after he sent Jeff Jarrett packing. Yeah, yeah. I was just trying to think of one against all odds. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, when, that's the first pay-per-view where he did the eyeballs on the eyelids. Yeah. So, this is not a new thing. But you know what? I'm going to say it. This was probably match of the night. And you know what? Even still, Kurt Angle is a fucking idiot. Yeah. Um, He's got torn can't... ligaments in his ankle and a torn MCL. And he's still and, wrestling. And his hamstring is... Still all, is still yeah. all fucked up. <gasps> yeah. He's just waiting for that quad tear, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we are definitely waiting for that quad tear. But, again, he goes out, hopped up on painkillers, obviously hopped up on painkillers, limping. limping. Oh, yeah. That was very unsettling to watch. Mm. And... He puts on a decent show with Jeff Hardy. And, you know, this this match... You know what? I, I, I can't complain too much about this match. I mean, yeah, it was your typical Hardy match, but Hardy and Angle were working pretty damn good together. Yeah. You know? It, but... And the, the story they told was pretty damn good. But again, nope. there was stupidity. And a lot of Angle's offense, by the way, was was in fact Hogan turret punches and throwing Jeff Hardy into the cage. Yep. The dumb thing at the end, though, is that um, basically Hardy hits the twist of fate, followed by two swanton bombs... And Angle just kicks out. So it takes a swanton from the top of the steel cage to finally put Jeff uh, put Kurt Angle away. When he could have climbed, when he could have gone down the other side of the cage and won it that way. Oh, but he's Jeff Hardy. He's extreme. Extreme. <laughs> Um, oh, by the way, there, there, we, we haven't been really mentioning this, but getting to the um, uh, highlight package, uh, TNA's production crew had to be told by Mike Tanay several times, "Hey, can we get a, uh, um, a, a can we get the uh, highlight package?" Yeah, thanks. Um, d- also, during the, uh, the tag team championships match, they fucked up the highlights package. And at the end, when you're supposed to see uh, Samo- uh, the, the finish, instead we got to see the beginning. I also think this was the match where they finally realized that one of Ric Flair's shoes was still in the ring. Yeah. <laughs> they wrestled the entire last match, not even noticing. Uh, well, yeah. Um, so up next is a match that I don't even think was on the card. TNA Knockouts Tag Team Championship. And at this point, because we were told that this this pay per view was going to go off the air at ten thirty, we were trying to figure out why they were padding. Well, they got an extra half hour out of it. Congratulations! That they didn't even use. Hmm. They barely used it. So yeah, ODB and Eric Young took in Nashville Predators jersey because I don't know if anybody follows him on Twitter, but Eric Young and the Nashville Predators are tight. <laughs> this was I at least donuts and his predators. That was at least amusing. <laughs> yeah. Um Yeah, Sarita and Rosita. Mm, I do terrible, terrible things to Rosita. Um and I'm not afraid to admit that. Um Ew. Moving but, on. And, and th- this is still so stupid because Eric Young cannot lay a hand on either of these women. No, no, due to, isn't it a mandate from Spike TV? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is entirely pointless, which means ODB is going to be the one doing all the heavy lifting, not that she can't, but at, at one point during this match, Rosita and, and, and Sarita just back um, Eric Young into the corner and, and start taunting him with their bodies. Now... I'm not going to say that neither... 
if if either one of these ladies were to come up to me and start hitting on me and you know and all that, I'd be kind of flattered. But Eric Young throws his arms up. Well, he's a married man, you see. Yeah, looks up to the sky, and I swear to God, he was going, "Look, look, ODB, not touching him, not touching him, not even looking, not looking, not touching." He he, he is a man who is faithful to his woman. I respect yeah. Eric Young for that. And has, yeah, has beach balls in her chest. Yeah. Yep. Doug Winger. Yes, she does. God uh, damn it, Lom. <laughs> Stop with the Doug Winger. We're not talking about crappy furry artists. <laughs> but um. ODB and Eric win. Yeah. With Moving the, uh, on. So once again, so let let's 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 just do a little little recap here of the. Almost every championship but the X Division was defended tonight. Bravo. None of them changed hands. The X Division hands. champion was in another match. So. Well, regardless, none of them changed hands. That was the trend tonight. And after some more padding, we get Bobby Roode versus James Storm. That doesn't even start. Oh, it's my God. The I problem mean, here is that, well, Bobby Roode's playing the cowardly heel, so he's like, I'm going to take my time getting into the ring. So he takes a slow lap around the ring, and eventually Storm just jumps out and eventually attacks him. He takes he takes a sweet-ass time. Yeah, yeah, he, really yeah he pretty much did like a brisk walk to and, catch up to Roode. And the... The thing is, like, they're just brawling, throwing each other into the cage. There's a spot where James Storm spits beer in Bobby Roode's face, most of it hitting SoCal Val, who was standing behind him. Oh, poor SoCal Val. She's a trooper, but poor SoCal Val. Yeah, yeah poor her. And this is coming from someone who didn't really start watching TNA until he started to come, started to watch with the dark match chat before I debuted. Yeah. I mean, this, this match, uh, once it actually got underway, was actually pretty damn decent. Yeah. It was. It was these guys can work a good match. I'll give them that. But, but oh my god, the finish. Yeah. The finish is the... And you know how they're going to spin this. Um, the finish comes where um, Storm hits the last call super kick. And, um, you know, basically uh, uh, takes that storm. But no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Before oh. that, we have a, a point where Bobby Roode is in the corner dead. James Storm is on yeah. the top turnbuckle and he oh, starts yeah. to climb out. And then Roode just yells at him and flips him off and Storm goes back down. Uh, yeah, so the spot, yeah. is, here's here's the lead up to the finish. First off, Storm takes out referee Brian Hepner with the last call super kick. Bobby Roode then takes out Storm and then calls for the cage door to open. And instead of walking out, ask Earl Hepner to give him a beer bottle, which he de- does, and he clocks Storm with it. Then oh, by he the way, has- sorry, oh. uh, when he asked uh, Hepner for the beer bottle, the door was open. Yeah, he could have jumped right the fuck out. Grab the this beer was, bottle, came back in and smashed Storm in, over the head. Which but was probably a wrong thing to do, anyways, because they probably he ex- probably got the wrong bottle because yeah, it wasn't because a gimmick bottle. bottle. Break. Yeah. No, it didn't. And um, so Storm, uh, so uh, so Bobby Roode after he busts this bottle over uh, James Storm's head. You know, brings in uh, br- brings in uh, uh, Hepner to get in here. Does his patented slow the the guy is gonna. You can always tell when somebody's gonna uh, uh, um, kick out when Earl Earl Hepner's in the uh, ring because he does this one, two, kick out, and um, then Storm hits the last call, which sends um, Rude right against the cage door. Then he hits another last call, which sends Rude to the floor. Congratulations, James Storm. You are the dumbest man at lockdown. And that's saying a lot. Because you're up there with Jeff Hardy, 
Garrett Bischoff, and Matt, Matt Morgan, Morgan, and uh, who else? Eric Young, the guy who is supposed to be brain damaged, and he is smarter than you. Yeah. That, you know, no, no. I'm going to go with what Mega Fighter just said. And why would you hit a second last call? What were you trying to do? Sandwich his head between your your uh, foot and the cage? Why would you do that? Just, just someone tell me that. I I normally overthink things, and I still can't come up with why he did that. You know what? I I don't mind the fact that they wanted Rude to retain. I don't really get it, and I'll get to why in a second. But this this just it first, first of all. It makes Rude look stupid because he's literally hanging outside the door and he could have just jumped down and won. And it makes Storm look stupid because what did you think was going to happen, man? They both had opportunities to just leave and win. And it really doesn't make sense for Storm because, oh, Bobby Rude's flipping you off? I'm at the point where I believe that taking Bobby Rude's title from him is about the worst thing you could do to him. Because yeah. he, he's so obsessed with that title, and if yeah. he loses it, that would destroy him. But you that, get back in the ring! That's the thing a lot... This is the thing that a lot of... Uh, uh, I mean, okay, you have Crimson with his quote-unquote undefeated streak. All Matt had to do was jump out, and it destroyed Crimson. You had James Storm over the top of the cage. All he has to do is jump down. He destroys Bobby Roode. Neither one of them do that because they're like, oh, it would be better if I pinned him. No. You know what? Really? Bobby Roode's character has kind of reached as far as it can defending the belt. And like, because he's beaten everyone. Where are they going to go with this? Um, let's see. Uh, there's no, well, okay, hold on. There's a jet. No. Um. Oh, I know. They could have him defend it again. No, they could. They can't. Um. Oh. Oh, I know. I know. He could defend the title against Joseph Parks, and that will bring out Abyss. Wait. He is Abyss. No, he's not. Skippy. But yeah, there there is there's nobody. There is literally nobody for um Bobby Roode to defend that title from. Who he hasn't already beaten. Uh, no no, I I don't think Garrett Bischoff is even close to ready for me. Up. Oh, that's who's going to be your new TNA t- uh, champion everybody. Garrett Bischoff. You know or, or even worse, Hulk Hogan. Oh god. Uh, uh, you know, what, what they're probably going to do is set up another match between Storm and Rude at Sacrifice, but you know what? It's not going to have the same weight to it, because both these guys look like idiots now. Mm, and, yep. it, it, like, this match had such great build to it. Like, what are they going to do now? It's like, I want you again. No! Oh, it's going to happen, brother. Damn! Wow. Have you been have you been sitting in on uh, TNA booking meetings? No, no. I'm just smart about this stuff and we've we're grown all... used to their decisions yeah uh, oh dear you know I, I could go on and on about how i mean this pay-per-view for the most part was stupid that was the running theme of the night and, and, and we've said this before tna doesn't book for pay-per-views they book for whatever um they, they book for whatever Eric Bischoff wants to book for. And it's killing them. I don't see how, besides Mommy and Daddy Carter bailing out um, bailing out Dixie whenever the bills come due, because this company is bleeding. Dixie doesn't even have the purse strings anymore. No, no, yeah, it's Mommy strings. Carter. Yeah, Mommy Carter. And you would think that mommy would go, okay, we could have just pulled the plug on this thing. But nobody wants to because it's like, well, what's Dixie going to do? Oh, shit. Here's the thing, though. This is apparently a tax write-off to them. Wait a minute. Hang on. I think I think Iron Bite just had a realization of something. What? 
Oh, yeah. I did. But now I've lost it. <laughs> Shit, I just ruined the one good fight he had. <laughs> God damn it, Skippy. God Stop calling it. me Skippy! Skippy, Skippy, Skippy. No, but, but kill you, like, Lom, I'll kill you. And and I know, I know their excuses. Oh, this is just what remains of Russo's stories. That's not an excuse. Stop using them. Then just stop it, okay? You know, it, it would be so fucking easy. All you gotta do is just go, okay, all these stories from Russo, all these storylines that make no sense, and all this shades of gray shit, out. Wipe the slate clean. Strip everybody of their titles, and just start no, fresh. No, 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 no. Don't wipe the slate clean. That's a Russo trope. Oh. Just, just take everything, throw it out the window, and start where you are, and just, like, write stuff about what you have. There is that. I, I could book this shit better. I, I have really to, could. I have to believe that Dave Lagana and Bruce Pritchard could do something better than this. But instead, they're just going off of what Russo had, had had planned nine months ago. Hell, I think even New Legacy's Blake can book stuff better than Russo can. Do you want... You, I mean, any competent E-Fed head out there. <laughs> and we're talking E-Feds here, okay? Yeah. Right? Hmm. Can book better than TNA. All right? Yeah, you're probably right yep. there, I'm right. And yet, I mean, I, mean, I could book a storyline where Eric Young's, you know, brain damage manifested itself in because he enjoys competing in three different personalities which eventually he algamates into back to one personality that's super serious and can kick a lot of ass instead he's the knockout tag team champion uh, I don't think I'd want to see Eric in a super serious gimmick he's always he's always been really good in the comedy spot but not this well, brain damaged thing not not super serious more like I can out wrestle anybody, and I'm cocky enough to uh, to, and I and I'm good enough to pull it off. But I'm also uh, I've also got a lighter side to me. So you something know? like what what Santino's kind of rocking now. Yeah, exactly. Something like that. All right. You know, um, I I mentioned this uh, briefly last night, but um, <clears throat> it has been uh confirmed that in a couple months James Storm's contract expires with TNA and he's in talks with them right now about renewing however it's also been said that he is in talks with people from Stamford, Connecticut please please save yourself man save yourself you know and you I, and have I hate, a chance I hate to you know you know fuel rumor speculations but if you came to me way back when when America's uh, Most Wanted did break up, Jean, and, and you told me, hey, James Storm is going to be a legitimate a main eventer, I would have laughed in your face. I would have put money on, uh, on, on Harris being, your, being more of a uh, legitimate main eventer than, than James fucking Storm. And here we are, and... Yeah, I, I I I would love to see James Storm bringing the uh, you know br being the cowboy up in uh, up in the WWE. It'd be like Stone Cold all over again. It'd be awesome. It would be with a lot more country twang because I'm sorry, Stone Cold's from Texas, and while that that's more redneck than country. Yeah, and that's just saying stuff. But again. We we all we all wish Samoa Joe ran away from TNA as fast as he fucking could, and look at what happened. You know, last night we honestly thought we were done watching TNA. I think a bunch of us just came together and said, "What if we just stopped watching it?" But you know what? I don't even think we really have to. This company, it can't last. This can't no. keep going. Uh, I mean, at some point, this, it's going to reach a breaking point, and 
it all goes down to shitter. And we'll see Vince McMahon announcing, I just bought TNA, and uh, I'm going to have me a victory Twinkie. Oh, damn it, Mark Henry gave them all. <laughs> <sighs> so that was locked down. Stupid. So yeah. very stupid. Yeah. Well, you know, it's yeah. kind of refreshing to see this kind of stupidity in TNA again. Yeah, I mean, at least it's stuff we can bitch about. Mm. Yeah. Instead of us going, oh, why do we have to talk about this? Now it's boring. Why do we have to talk about this? Oh, because it hurts us. Ah. Share. It's actually pretty invigorating. It kind of is. So, what gets more screen time than Jay Lethal? I got one. I know the, you do. The idiot ball got more screen time than Jay Lethal. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, that's, I thought you were going to go with the uh, obvious one. Good job. Um, I'm probably going to go with the obvious one, because I think I know what you're talking about. Ric Flair's shoe gets more screen time than Jay Lethal. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And here I thought the obvious one was Montgomery Gentry gets more screen time than Jay Lethal. Oh That's my it. god, we forgot to mention that. I don't want to mention that. And I'm not going to. Fuck Montgomery Gentry. Um, their only connection to TNA is the fact that, um... Uh, they, they do James Storm's theme song, and that's all I want to talk about. And they and, were in, in front row for the main event. Yeah, with James Storm's wife. Anyways, weird old-school Hogan gets more screen time than Jay Lethal. Mm. He was the best part of lockdown. Well, besides Velvet Sky in a, in a very, very short skirt. You're a I'm pervert. A, Creepy. I am a pervert, okay? And I am proud to be a pervert. Wow, someone besides me stole a catchphrase. I think we need to end this before we get into some sort of benefit. Yeah, yeah uh, don't forget to subscribe to us on Blip TV or YouTube. And if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, please uh, like this video and leave a comment. We need the feedback. Uh, you can also like us on Facebook. Leave your comments there if you want. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Dark Match Wrestling. You can also follow each of us individually on Twitter. And uh, don't forget to check out TRE Productions. They graciously host all of our videos and lots of other cool content. We're also on Review Utopia in the community section. And last but not least, uh, come talk with us on the Spoonie Experiment forums. Uh, that's going to do it for Dark Match this time around. I am your foxy friend, Backlash. I am your Red Dragon Lord Star. I'm Mega Fire Free. And I'm Iron Bite. Iron Bite Dash. Good night and good luck. <laughs>